We all know that some of the best playing tall countries in EU4 are Holland, Florence, Milan, Korea, and you have links to all of those in the description below, by the way. But there's one more country that not many people know about. It's a one province miner with the sexiest map color. Indeed, it is Goslar. For 10,000 likes, we'll also be doing a special Transylvanian vampire role-playing run. So let me know in the comments if you're excited to see that. Despite starting off as a one province miner, the nation of Goslar is a unique nation because it does start as a free city within the Holy Roman Empire which offers it the ability to have minus 10 dev cost reduction and plus 10 trade efficiency from the start plus if anybody attacks you the Emperor is gonna protect you so you're gonna be the only one that does any sort of attacking not only that but Goslar is one of the few nations that starts with a dev cost reduction as its traditions alongside Diplo reputation and the ideas are pretty good in general goods produced, construction cost reduction, trade power, land force limit, morale of armies, and diplo relations, which honestly is the definition of playing toll ideas at the end of the day. It boosts up our economy, allows us to develop for cheaper, and it still maintains a strong army with the extra morale of armies and land force limit bonuses. The best part also is that we can form Saxony and Prussia and the German Empire. We can even form all three one by one if we wish to. Take note you do start with a randomly generated burgermeister in case you don't know what a burgermeister is is the dude that makes the burgers and mcdonald's true story trust me okay that means you can have a 000 starting leader or a 666 starting leader it's up to you how many times you want to restart because every time you restart this campaign you're gonna get a different leader we also gonna be doing our estates now so we're gonna summon the diet go for whichever agenda best suits us we're also gonna give out the plus one monthly mana privilege just for all three estates supremacy over the council patronage of the arts and if you need any money you can just get the indebted to the burgers guild loans which are one percent interest loans so essentially basically no interest or very little interest don't worry about the fact that you start with uh very bad debuffs here it's really irrelevant absolutism doesn't trigger until the 1600s liberty desire and subject is really not that much even though it says plus 100 percent tax modifier gets uh, offset by the plus 10 here and it's really not that much of a debuff in itself and the autonomy change which is the worst one out of all of them is irrelevant because your capital city is never going to have more than zero autonomy and you do have only one city the capital city so until we get more lands we can have a thousand autonomy per month and it makes no difference let's go ahead and get our rivals we're going to go with magdeburg lunaburg and brunswick as our first three rivals and our expansion path is going to be very rng it depends what alliances Brunswick and Magdeburg get. We're essentially going to be attacking the nation that has the weakest alliance sets. Speaking of alliances, we're also going to get an alliance with Hesse, which almost always allies us. Except in the one time that I'm recording, they don't ally us. So I guess we're going to ally with Würzburg in that case. Normally, Hesse helps out against Brunswick, so you might want to improve relations with them if they don't ally you. Or we can do this nine head move here. Give out the religious diplomats, which improves the relation with them automatically. We can, however, get an alliance with Brandenburg which is massive because of the uh, religious diplomats that we just took so let's use them in a future war against Magdeburg I think that would be a very smart idea what do you guys think I have to say that sometimes RNG really kicks you in the balls look at this Brunswick is allied to Burgundy and Dithmarschen and Magdeburg which most of the times doesn't even get allies by the 11th of December is allied to my own ally Brandenburg <laughs> oh god dude are you for real right now that means I have to either fight Brandenburg Brandenburg or Burgundy in order to start expanding anywhere with Saxony not really being an option since they are very strong but considering my current alternatives I actually might attack Saxony now Lunaburg on the other hand does not have any allies just yet I'm gonna do my humiliation war against them this way I get some mana points whilst I'm uh, getting my claims on Magdeburg let's also make our leader a general and we got one siege pip not too bad oh look at that Magdeburg is so nice they're actually giving me military access <laughs> despite the fact that I rival them and the only units that the uh, Lunaburg had are 
basically dead ski. Let's uh, send 1,000 boys on the other tile as well. I'm also going to be doing my mission, which is to develop Ghostlord twice. It only cost me 42 to 45 mana points to dev this up. So it's super cheap for 1444 essentially. And I'm also going to get one stability now, as well as I'm going to give the minus 25 advisor cost reduction privileges. But I'll be doing this as soon as I actually get some advisors. I don't have any right now. I will get advisors once I've actually expanded a tiny little bit. Lunaberg, if you fall, I'm gonna give you chocolatin. Do you not want some chocolat? You want? I knew you want some chocolatin. <laughs> we're going for the show of strength, which means we're getting a hundred of each mana points, and uh, as such, we are becoming absolute the Chad Lords. Because we're a free city, we also can recruit both the free city company as well as the regular free company, and together they're super cheap, and we essentially can have a lot more troops than we would normally have. Because of the pickle that I'm in right now, I cannot attack. Magdeburg without losing my alliance so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna attack Saxony and I'm lucky because both of Wurzburg and Brandenburg are interested in their land so I'm gonna call them into my war and you probably guessed what I'm gonna do didn't you but yeah let's start with this war and let's try and rush for some of these guys so we can piece them out quickly we got to be extra careful we went over our force limit by a lot so we got to piece out of this war soon otherwise we're gonna lose a lot of money now despite having attacked Saxony I'm also gonna attack Magdeburg because they're allied to Brandenburg, but because Brandenburg's already busy in my war, they cannot join Magdeburg's war. And the reality is that I kind of attacked Saxony as a distraction for the Brandenburgians. So you gotta plan these things ahead of time, essentially, and make sure you know what you're doing because this can end pretty badly if you're not confident you can win it. Versburg might be pieced out, or they might even attack the troops in Erfurt. Really, really hope that I managed to take the uh, province of Magdeburg. Nope, no, I knew they're gonna attack them. I knew that they will attack them. Well, there goes all the siege progress. Now we're gonna have to go back and take that afterwards. Please, full Magdeburg. Oh boy! We managed to get a little bit of army tradition from that. And now let's go ahead and uh, piece them out fully. Noise. Now we have two more provinces. Amaze bowls. And because of these two more provinces, we can take considerably bigger loans. And holy schnapps, Brandenburg actually gave me Anhalt. I am so taking Anhalt. Thank you very much, Brandenburg. Very kind of you. Not to mention, I kind of want a lot of aggressive expansion from the beginning because this way I'm going to wait for 10 years after whilst the aggressive expansion is going down, I'm developing and increasing the economy of my country in that particular time frame. It does mean that we're not a free city anymore. In the recent patch, guys, take note, the Emperor is always going to ask you for unlawful territory, but don't worry, you don't need to give it to them. It's your choice. Oh boy, looks like we got a Mexican standoff. It's us. Brandenburg, the enemies, and the enemies rebels for some reason. I'm killing off the enemies rebels because that's going to bait them to come into Wittenberg, which is what I want because I want to kill them off in Wittenberg. Actually, got to wait for one more date. We got to get there on the second at least. So this way we get one month's tick of uh, morale. And we can attack him now. Noise Brandenburg even joined us. Amazing. Oh, this is really not good. Oh boy. Würzburg peaced out. They gave one province to Thuringia. And doesn't that actually make Thuringia disloyal? 37%. It would make them disloyal as long as I managed to kill off some of the Saxon army. We're going to keep the leader so we get one extra mana points of each. And that means we have a 543 leader now. A few months passed to 145, 144. That means they got 2,000 separatists that they're going to be fighting amongst them. There you go. Fight those separatist boyos and uh, we're gonna try and get more of their alliance block outside of this war that means i'm gonna have to get nuremberg out of this war maybe we can even win this battle here because it is a defensive battle for us we really just need a couple of good rolls and then we're gonna win this battle come on boy come on oh my god we won that we freaking won that dude oh that is insane i sometimes really hate this game i was about to siege down uh, ansbach and uh the fort cracked and they're about to take it it's just ridiculous the game Game really doesn't like me, does it? That was fooled, guys. That was fooled. We should win this because we got like 3,000 trips more. There you go. We won it. But uh, yeah, we're going to have to play this a little bit more defensive than I was hoping to have to play it. We are going to be the first ones to get military tech for though. So that should help in the war. It is not going great, man. Brandenburg's definitely going to leave very, very soon this war. Oh my freaking God. This actually fell. Took a very long time. And essentially we uh kind of got the Brandenburg 
Bergenland's destroyed over here, but it's okay. Nobody's looking at Brandenburg. All that matters is that we get Leipzig so we can actually appease uh, Saxony out on our terms. All right, everything is good. Everything is fine, boys. Let's go with uh, Leipzig as our target. Maybe some money. I would love to take a second province from them, actually. How about if we also take Vogtland? Would that be a good... I think that would actually be good. Yeah, let's go for this. And I'm not giving anything to Brandenburg, which essentially means that I've backstabbed them. But it's all good because I was going to cancel that alliance anyway, so it doesn't really matter. And with these two provinces, we have access to the Keb Gold Mine in Bohemia. Wink, wink. As well as the uh, Bayreuth provinces, so we can expand into the south. If all of our northern provinces and northern expansion paths are not possible anymore. Plus, in just six years, we went for a lonely OPM to having six provinces. Which means now we can definitely chill, wait for the AE to go down... And whilst we're waiting for the AE to go down, we develop our country, fix our economy, and become ridiculously strong. Just remember, though, that everybody's got a different RNG. My preferred tactic would not have been doing this, what I just did now. I would have preferred to just attack Brownswick, fully annex Brownswick, then fully annex Lunenburg, Lauenburg, all these guys here, because this is low aggressive expansion land. And not only that, but it leads me to getting the juicy lands and the Netherlands, and it offers a lot more expansion paths. But because of RNG and because these bastards actually allied Burgundy, it's pretty much a no-go in that area. Now, after the AE goes down, I'm going to be attacking Brandenburg, which is only allied to Volgast, it seems. So, I'll be taking the western part of Brandenburg to make my way towards the Lubeck areas. Unless something changes again. Because of that expansion, we also went up to 14.995 Crownlands. So, by getting another Seize Crownlands here, we are going to go up to almost 20% Crownlands, which essentially means that we're not actually actually losing any of our crownlands let's develop this once there you go so because we developed and it offered a 0.2 crownlands we are not getting any autonomy debuff in just six years even though we gave all three of the plus one map privileges and remember if it ever asks you to take the estate statutory do not take it because the estate statutory is absolute crap and it just ruins your economy and it ruins your country completely. I'm going to get the indebted to the burgers loan because uh, I'm going to pay off my old loans that I had from before. This way I have uh, only proper loans and I only need to pay back 0.17 ducats in interest. Also going to be sending a scornful insult to Brownswick so we get some more power projection. By improving relations with the Poles, we managed to get an alliance with them. And this is going to come in handy because it is our protection against the Emperor in case he does decide to enforce those unlawful territories territory claims that he keeps sending us. Also managed to get an alliance with uh, Munster and we're going to use them against Brunswick whenever their ally Burgundy is at war and uh, Brunswick doesn't have the support of Burgundy. Which is basically a long term play right there. We also consolidated our troops so we're not hemorrhaging money as much as we were before. Just one ducat on the minus is actually acceptable. And also this is very very important so do not forget after you core your provinces lower the autonomy it will increase your land force limit, manpower, and economy. Fight those rebels, be a man, and get some army tradition from fighting the rebels. Looks like Burgundy has attacked Liege. This happens in pretty much all of the games that I've had so far. Burgundy attacks Liege and then Austria helps Liege. So Burgundy and Austria are going to be at war and it's going to be a painful war. So that is the moment when we will be attacking a Brunswick. We just need to get a claim on these bad boys. And it will take a few months anyway until the Burgundians are not willing to join in the war. So we have time. 1453 and the city of Constantinople was taken by the Turks. I guess we're going full on historical mode here, boys. And what do you know? Saxony is at war with Thuringia, the Thuringian War of Independence. And apparently Bohemia is helping Thuringia out. So I'm pretty sure Saxony is not going to be around after this war. What was I saying earlier? Look at this. Burgundy is not joining. 4142. That means we can attack Braunschweig and we can take these lands for ourselves. Likely we'll not be able to fully annex them, sadly, because we have quite a bit of aggressive expansion already. But maybe just taking one province and canceling the alliances might be a little bit more fruitful. It would appear that we can call in the Munster, yeah? I actually need these guys because um, I, I have enough troops to win the war, but it would be a lot faster if I called in Munster, to be fair. And I can even give them some of the lands here. This way I can make the nation of Brunswick disappear forever. I think it's 
it's super cute how they're actually trying to siege down Munster. We basically have twice the amount of soldiers they got now, so I'm actually gonna enforce my stuff here. Basically gonna bully them into giving me all of their money and war reparations. And I got a huge amount of rebels. I actually need to deal with my rebels. I forgot about this. Are they close to enforcing? Oh, okay, okay, yeah, I gotta, I gotta deal with my rebels first. These bastardos are taking advantage of this and they're unseaging stuff. Not happy with it, but uh, it's all good. I'm gonna kill them off after. I don't think they even have enough troops to unseage the Martian. Just as I said that, they brought another 5,000 in there, so now they do have enough troops. Are you actually for real right now, bruh? <laughs> well, potatoes, now we're actually outnumbered 2 to 1. Uh, so I'm gonna do the smart thing and I'm gonna peace out before I get completely raffle stomped. I'm only taking the province in the south and I'm giving the other two to Munster. I'm canceling their alliance also. Can I get some money? Apparently a little bit of money. I'm doing this because of aggressive expansion. It's still pretty high right now. And uh, if I cancel their alliance, they only have the one with Nassau. There's a high enough chance that Brandenburg or Köln is going to attack them, which is perfect because then I can just release them from the province of uh, Göttingen afterwards. We actually can see some more crownlands. Let's do that and kill off the rebels. I think I'm going to wait a little bit longer for Brandenburg because even if I attack him now, I won't be able to get Altmar because of the aggressive expansion. And Wurzburg canceled the alliance with us. Oh, damn, Wurzburg. Why? All I ever did for you was promise land and not give it back. Is that too much to handle? Oh, wow. Brunswick just went five head and they got an alliance with the Bohemia. I've also devved up all of my provinces to 10 development. This way, Renaissance automatically spreads to these provinces as one of the prerequisites for Renaissance to spawn or to better yet appear in a province is to have 10 development if you are a European province. We got our first idea set unlocked and we're gonna go for quantity ideas because quantity with economic is the playing toll meta because it offers minus 30 dev cost reduction from the policy as well as the economic final idea here. We also can go plutocratic later on but even though you are a republic I still recommend quantity first followed by economic and plutocratic third or trade either of the two is perfect you want to go quantity first though you don't want to go economic because you're going to want to use your military points on your ideas and the extra admin points you're going to use to unlock admin tech 7 so that you can set up your second idea set faster than you would otherwise if you go an admin idea first you're going to struggle splitting the points between idea and technology so you don't want to be in that sort of a pickle, do you? So we waited for a few years, we developed our lands, we increased our army size, and now we're actually ready for the war against Brandenburg. We can even call in Poland and Bologna. They have allied Hungary and Brunswick in the meanwhile. Who would have thought that the AI is going to ally a million nations just to screw me over? Not me, sir. I would never have thought this. Absolutely lovely how Poland is crushing over Volgast and Brandenburg, and the enemies are basically crushing my lands at the same time imagine if i'm able to release the pirates of rugen oh god oh i'm able to oh lord i just released uh, rugen fingers crossed they become a pirate republic and screw over everybody in the baltic as consequence if poland kills off my rebels i'll be really happy come on poland you can do it just just come into the province of hala will you oh oh they're doing it they're actually killing off my rebels oh my lord thank you so much poland you're the best ally ever being situationally aware and adapting to your rng is the best way to play this game so why i'm saying that is because Brownswick here, I did not co them, so I'm getting double the aggressive expansion if I annex them, or if I vassalize them, but because Kallenberg separatists have been around for a while, and I strongly suspect that Kallenberg's actually gonna break free from Munster, it makes sense for me to vassalize Brunswick, take their money, it's not too much aggressive expansion, and the reality is that I can use them to get their cores back afterwards, like 20 development or something like that, without too much aggressive expansion. And if I was to fight Brunswick another time because oh too much aggressive expansion i would have had to fight bohemia thuringia and half of the hre because they allied everybody meanwhile moldova and company here doing a lot of damage to the hungarians we're also going to get the burger loans again because i can now adopt the institution there we go renaissance that means we can get this a lot cheaper as a testament that shows how much of a peaceful and plain toll country we are we're only going to take two provinces from brandenburg here and we have a mission to take one of these provinces so we're getting some extra 
extra admin points also. And as expected, Kallenberg broke away. And one day, let's go attack Ski. They have no allies because they literally just broke away. A very important part of playing Toll is, of course, building the right buildings and the right places. That's why we're going to be building workshops in all of our provinces, starting with Goslar, which offers a huge boost to our economy from building this here. And then as we go along into the other ones as well, we also built a marketplace in Magdeburg because this is the province with the highest trade power right now in our country. By the way, if you're interested in this save, you can find it on my Patreon or you can also get it if you are a channel member. Super easy war against Kallenberg, three aggressive expansion, and we also got a juicy vassal here that is actually able to help us out in uh, wars. And we've grown in size massively in just the first few years. The truth is also that in the latest update, the AI develops the provinces a lot more, so it's a lot harder to actually expand in the HRE nowadays than it used to be before. Remember that with every single military technology, your regular units increase in price by 2% and your mercenary companies increase in price by 8%. So by the time that you get Military Tech 7, you should have phased out all of the mercenary units. We're still Military Tech 5, but I am phasing out my military units because I do have a huge amount of manpower. And of course, Poland wants us to join their war. Let's do it. We are a good ally, got Schnapples. We asked them to get ready for war, and now they are going to be helping us in a war against Thuringia and Bohemia. It's going to be a big war. It's not easy, trust me, especially since Bohemia is a massive nation, which is really why we need the Poles for this war to help us out. We're going to have to set up the defensive edict in our province here, because we're going to get sieged in both uh, Goslar and Magdeburg. Luckily, we also have our vassal which has a level 3 fort in their capital essentially so it's going to take them a while before they can actually crack all of our forts and that's the time that we need for the poles to finish them off and this way we can get a white piece with the bohemians let's also try and relieve the siege of goslar if we can hopefully they don't reinforce it in time and we can just crush them up of course we got a zero roll which means we got delay and which means these guys are actually going to make it in time bastards man i hate this game i hate this freaking game sometimes by occupying the fort in Olomouc and just starting to siege down Prague we should be able to get a white piece with these guys can we get some money actually we can get actually and we even get uh 60 of these ducats for ourselves get out of my land Thuringio this is my land <laughs> and look at this guys Rugen is a pirate republic and they're definitely killing off the trade in the entirety of the Baltic now and just take a good look at this guys it only costs us 25 mana points to actually develop this province and we haven't even unlocked the playing toll modifiers from economic and quantity surprisingly it's not really that many nations in the coalition against us despite taking some pretty good lands over here in uh, Wittenbach and Zwickau and now we also can attack attack Saxony which is the main thing that we need right now because in order to form the nation of Saxony itself we need to get rid of previous Saxony as well as uh, have Wittenbach as a core and six Saxon provinces overall and we already have seven Saxon provinces so we're set with all of that we could technically call in Poland again but we really don't need to this is a very easy war they essentially have less than uh, half of what we have troop wise yeah can't run away from me Nuremberg we're gonna have some trials and you're gonna like it we'll call them the nuremberg trials <laughs> probably not the same time frame for the nuremberg trials but hey you know what it still works if you really think about it just don't think too deeply oh my god bohemia just got excommunicado are you serious this is essentially a proper czech buffet hey <laughs> hey Anyway, you're probably wondering why I did not yet form Saxony. I can. Honestly, I didn't form it because I like the color of Goslar a lot more. But let's just show you what happens if you form Saxony. If you do, do not take the ideas of Saxony. Keep the Goslar ideas because they're better. But you get the uh, Saxon mission tree, which gives you quite a few claims around the HRE, as well as it gives you some permanent modifiers, like the tolerance of the true faith plus one, production efficiency plus 10 until the end of the game as well. And it also spawns in porcelain, the province of Meissen, which is, I believe, in Wittenberg. Or it might just be in Dresden, and I'm wrong about that. My apologies if that is the case eventually you can also form Prussia later on and you can use the Prussian missions on your way towards forming Germany and that is when you also take the Prussian ideas which are considerably better than the Goslar ideas but until that point you can take full advantage of the Goslar ideas and have a pretty enjoyable game also I just realized that Transylvania is alive you know what 
if we get 10,000 likes on this video, I'm gonna do a Transylvania special vampire run where we do a little bit of role playing as well. Also, check out this awesome video up next. And I really want to thank all my patrons, channel members, and Twitch subscribers for the amazing support you guys have been offering. I really wouldn't be able to maintain this channel without all of your help.